Okay, let's go ahead and solve this nice little math problem here. And it's already fun because we're dealing with math, but this is going to be an extra dose of fun because we're going to put our calculators away. Now, a lot of you are saying to yourself, I do not do any math without my calculator. But listen, what happens if you don't have your calculator available to you for whatever reason or if your cell phone you know, falls out of your pocket, you don't have that thing with you as well? Because I know, like you, I am the same way. I have my phone with me everywhere, and our phones are like little supercomputers. But you know what's a better supercomputer than even your phone? that little computer in between your ears called your brain. And you're going to have to kind of brush up on these basic arithmetic skills, i.e. doing mathematics without a calculator. Because if you don't, um, you know, challenge yourself from time to time, you will forget basic arithmetic. And that is not going to be good because there's going to be plenty of situations where you're going to have to do math uh, without a calculator, especially if you are a student. Okay, so with that little introduction, if you think you can do this problem, again, no calculator. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct result, and then we're going to walk through this problem step by step and really uh, think about the different uh, math skills that we need to understand in order to do this problem correctly. And I would say if you're at the middle school level or above, uh, this is a problem you should be able to do. Okay, so before we get going, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion, my true calling to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. Please do not give up. The key to, be, to being successful in math is having access to great math instruction, i.e., when you're in a classroom or if you're reading a book, if you're totally lost, you are not learning. Okay, Math is a technical subject, and sometimes it can be taught in a very technical way. The way I like to teach math is to explain it in language that everyone gets what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes, okay? Uh, the, uh, the students that take great notes are those students who have grades like this. So if you really want to raise your grades or do as best as possible in your particular math course or in mathematics in general, take awesome notes. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. So we have brackets parentheses, uh, one half minus three fourths, parentheses, minus five, bracket divided by uh, parentheses, one minus seven, and parentheses. Again, we're not gonna use a calculator. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. Here it is, seven eighths. Okay, that is the answer. All right, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. And if you did get this right, that's very good. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that you conquered a nice arithmetic problem today. So nice job. Now, if you didn't get this right, but you're like, you know, I'm pretty convinced I did this, but I didn't get the answer that you got. Well, hopefully you are writing out all your steps, okay? Because if you did write out all your steps, I'm going to show you each step of this problem. And let's suppose you did the first step right, the second step right, but on the third step, you're like, oh, this is where I made my error. And if you un uh, understand your error and you don't make that again, you will improve in mathematics. That's why it's so critical to be neat and organized, okay? And you got to practice math. It is a skill. But anyways, let's get into this problem right now. All right, so here is our problem and... What are we going to need to know in order to do this problem? Well, we're going to have to have a good understanding. This is, no, by the way, this list is no particular skills, and I'm probably missing a few other things, but this is, I think, the basic essential ingredients, i.e., in terms of skills in order to do this problem. 
So the first thing you're going to have to understand PEMDAS, what is this? This is the order of operations. You see here we have subtraction, okay, going on here, subtraction, we have division. So we have different op uh, different operations. We need some sort of uh, checklist in what, in what order we do these operations. So PEMDAS is this little acronym. It stands for parentheses. P is also uh, uh, what we call grouping symbols. So it's these parentheses or brackets. So you start with the innermost and you kind of expand out from there. E stands for uh, exponents or powers. M and D is multiplication and division. And A and S is addition and subtraction. And you do this from left to right. And by the way, it's whatever you see first in terms of multiplication and division. So if you have division before multiplication, you do that first. Okay, this is probably one of the most uh, misunderstood aspects of the order of operations. Okay, I'm, thousands and thousands and thousands of students, unfortunately, have uh, paid a heavy price on quizzes and tests because they don't truly understand or fully understand the order of operations. By the way, if you need help with any of this stuff, if you're like, oh, I'm already lost, check out my pre-algebra course or maybe my math foundations course in my math help program. I have full instruction on all these topics. Okay, so what's the next thing we need to know? Well, we need to uh, have a good sense of just basic number operations, how we add, subtract, multiply, and divide because we are not using a calculator here. So you're gonna have to uh, be able to handle some basic number operations. And here, you're also going to have to be able to handle positive and negative number rules because we're going to uh, end up with some negative numbers uh, and you'll see here in a second. So you need to know how do you add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. And last but not least, we have some fractions going on here. So you need to know a little bit about fractions as well. So these are the uh, specific skills that you need to know. Now, let's suppose you're looking at this and you're like, oh yeah, I forget these rules. I'm like, uh, I always make a mistake with positive and negative number rules. Well, look, that's good that you know that because you can work on this and improve. The worst thing that you, you can, um, you know, worst situation in math, and of course every situation you can improve, is not knowing what you don't know. You're like, I don't know anything. I don't know what I know or don't know. Listen, that's fine, but that's what you need to get with someone, you know, a tutor or myself. So you, when you do problems, you're like, oh, you're doing this incorrectly. So when you watch my videos, do your work, okay, step by step, whatever you think is correct, and then you'll be able to uh, correct any misunderstandings. But let's go ahead and now and apply all these skills to simplify this problem. All right, so first things first, and we are always kind of keeping that PEMDAS order of operations in mind. So remember, PEMDAS, I'll kind of write it out here again, this P stands for parentheses, but what does that mean? Well, it really means grouping symbols. So the parentheses are used to group numbers together like right here. Brackets are also used to group numbers together. You also can have these little squiggly brackets like that. Those are just grouping symbols. That's what that P stands for. So you can see right here, I have these brackets and then inside of these brackets, I'm grouping together these two numbers. So what you want to do is look for grouping symbols, and you want to go to your innermost uh, grouping symbols, i.e. you want to go uh, inside whatever brackets or parentheses you might have to see if there's other parentheses within the parentheses. In this case, there is. That's where you need to start. So this is our P here. And so here is a bracket. We have this parenthesis, so we're going to work on this in a second. But over here, this uh, set of parenthesis has nothing to do with these uh, grouping symbols over here. So we can uh, deal with this real quick as well. All right, so we have one half minus three fourths. And again, we're going to have to know a little bit about fractions. So how do we do this problem? Well, the LCD is what uh, four. Okay, so we have one half and uh, minus three fourths. The lowest common denominator is four. So the easiest way to do this is to rewrite one half um, uh, where the denominator is four. So we just multiply the numerator and denominator by two. So you got two fourths. Again, two fourths, if I reduce that fraction down, it is one half. So now I just simply need to um, subtract uh, three fourths from two fourths. So how do we do that? Well, when the denominators are the same, we can add and subtract uh, fractions. And what we do, we just perform this operation on the numerator. 
Okay, so here it is subtraction. So we're going to subtract the numerators. So that's 2 minus 3. You have to be very careful here. 2 minus 3 is what? That's going to be a negative number. You can think of this as 2 plus negative 3. So the final answer here is negative 1 fourth. Now, again, if you don't understand what's going on, you're like, ah, I don't really know what he's doing with the fractions and this positive negative number stuff. Listen, that's good that you don't know because that you, you have a little list uh, of things to work on, okay? All right, so that's what this answer is going to be. Now, here, I'm doing the work right here um, underneath this problem, and it's getting kind of messy in real life, right? If you're working with a piece of paper and pencil, you kind of sometimes want to do this off to the side, do any a little arithmetic, and then put that into the problem. You'll see here in a second how to kind of clean this up. But let's go ahead and deal with this real quick. We have 1 minus 7. Oh, yeah, and, a great, and we're subtracting numbers here. So what you want to do is turn that sub subtraction operator into an addition, go by plus negative, right? If you haven't seen that, uh, if uh, you haven't yet learned positive and negative numbers, this is how we subtract two numbers. See, so that's the same thing as 1 plus negative 7, which is negative 6. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this all up right now. So here was our problem, and we figured out uh, with the difference of these two fractions are, and that is negative one fourth, and then one minus seven is negative six. So again, you want to kind of keep your final answers, you know, you want to keep a nice flow, keep it nice and neat, you know, um, as you're doing each step of the prompt. So all this other work right here, try to do off to the side. So you might be saying to yourself, yeah, you know, I don't need to know uh, all those little details, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Just show me the work. Listen, math is a language, okay? Each step is like a sentence. This whole thing is like a paragraph. The way you express yourself mathematically does count because someone is going to be reading your work. So trust me, okay? Follow my guidance. And I've only been doing this for decades, right? How many uh, pieces of math work have I seen? You know, quizzes, tests, exams, homework. Yeah, maybe 100 million over the decades, well, maybe not that much, but you get the idea a lot, okay? Neatness and organization absolutely counts. Okay, so now we have uh, this bracket, okay? We figured this out, and now this is just a number. So what do we need to do uh, next? Well, we're not done inside of our grouping symbol, okay? We have this bracket, so we, now we have to figure out this part. So we have negative one-fourth minus five, and there's nothing to do right here, right? There's a parentheses, but you know, we technically we could drop that. This that's negative six. So we have to figure out with negative uh, negative one fourth minus five is again another opportunity to um, have some fun with fractions. So this is negative one fourth five is what as a fraction? And tell me, I want to think of a number as a fraction? It's just a number by itself. Just put it over one. Okay, so you're like, hey, where's the denominator? I don't see the denominator. Well, just put it over 1, and now you have a lovely denominator because 5 divided by 1, of course, is 5. So this is our problem. Now, we need the LCD. The LCD is what? The lowest common denominator. That is 4. So we need to multiply this denominator 1 by 4 to get it 4. But when I do that, I have to multiply the numerator by 4. So I have negative 1 fourth minus 4 over 20. Okay, 20 divided by 4, which of course would be the same as 5. But here, now finally I have the same denominators, 4. So all I need to do is to add or subtract the respective numerators. So this is 1 minus 20. So this negative right here goes with the numerator. So this is the same thing as negative 1 minus 20 or negative 1 plus a negative 20, which of course is negative 21 over 4. So some students get confused. They're like, well, is negative 21 over 4 the same thing as negative 21 over 4? And is that the same thing as 21, positive uh, 21 over negative 4? Okay, all of these are um, equivalent. These are all equivalent um, answers. Okay, now generally speaking, you want to write your answer right here. You want to put that negative sign in front of your fraction. That's the best kind of notation of it. But here we have a negative divided by positive, which is what? That's a negative number. Uh, this is a negative number. And then positive divided by negative is a negative number. So don't get too um, caught up, you know, in where the negative sign might be as you're working the problem out. But leave your final versions of answers like this. Now, I only bring this up because this is a question that comes up from time to time. But let's go ahead and continue on now. 
All right, so again, that's work that you would want to do uh, off to the side. So we figured out what negative one fourth minus five is. It is uh, negative one fourth minus five. It is negative 21 over four. And that's going to be divided by negative six. All right, so back to fractions again. So this is the same thing as what? We have negative 21 uh, over four divided by negative six. Well, you can interpret this problem this way. Negative 21 divided by negative six over one. In other words, we could just drop the parentheses. There's no more, um, there's nothing left to do inside the parentheses. So we just have a straight fraction problem right here. So how do we divide fractions? Easy, what we need to do is change this division operator to multiplication. And the way we do that is we flip the fraction to the right of the division operator upside down. That's called the reciprocal. So here we have negative six over one. We're gonna flip it upside down. We're gonna uh, flip the numerator and the denominator. They're gonna exchange places. So you're gonna end up with negative one over six. Okay, that is the reciprocal of six. And now, how do we multiply fractions? This is so easy. All you need to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So four times six is 24. Negative 21 times negative one is a positive 21 over four. Now, if you got this answer, you were super close, but you were not done because you, uh, anytime uh, you're dealing with fractions, you always want to see if there's an opportunity to uh, reduce or simplify your answer. And you could see here 21 and 24 3 goes into 21, what? 7, and 3 goes into 24, what? 8. So always produce your answers. And there you go. So 7 eighths is the final answer. So, you know, a little problem like this, I think, can be um, a reminder that basic mathematics, you know, there is no such thing as you know, basic mathematics. It's all relative. You're in fifth grade, you know, you're learning, you know, basic math to somebody who might be in college. But for you, that's what you're learning right now, right? Middle school, same thing. High school, you know, that term uh, basic is all relative. But I'm going to tell you right now, all levels of mathematics are important. Math is cumulative. Okay. And I think uh, a lot of uh, students, especially as they get into high school and college, they totally f kind of forget elementary level math. They're like, arithmetic? Yeah, that's stuff that I, I had to do with a pencil and paper. That's before I was able to use a calculator. I don't need to uh, remember all that stuff anymore because I get to use my calculator. That Nothing could be further from the truth. You need to keep your arithmetic skills. So, uh, you know, from time to time, practice without a calculator, okay? And again, if you don't understand any of the things that I did in this prom, you need to brush up on those respective skills that we talked about. Again, two courses I would recommend, my pre-algebra course or my math foundation course. Okay, so if this video helped you out even to a small little degree, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.